I am Samantha Merrilies, I am Scott's proud ma and I'm also the founder of his charity, the Scott Martin Foundation. Scott was a lovely boy, he really, he was a wonderful person, he had a really big personality, really large character, he was the, the life and soul and that was apparent even for he was a, a small child. He was the type of person that even if you only met him once or you just met him briefly, you never forgot him, you always remembered him. He was really caring, he was just a lovely boy to have around. He was really family orientated, so he really loved like being around his family and get togethers or stuff like that. He loved that kind of thing. And he also loved being around his friends. At school, I would say Scott was never really academic. He struggled quite a lot through school, right from primary school right into high school. Anything sport, Scott excelled at. He was just natural. He was just a natural sports person. Boxing and football was obviously his main things, but any kind of sport at all, whether it be snowboarding, cycling, fishing, anything that he, he kind of put his hand to, he, he just, he was brilliant at it. Referee Joe Duffy stops this contest in round number two in favour of the winner, who is now Scottish novice schoolboy, Borno 405, 62 kilo champion in the blue corner, Scott Martin. Brilliant, Scott first became ill and started to voice what he was experiencing when he was, he was around about 15, coming up for 16. And a lot of the things the kind of doctors put down to just being like his age, hormones and things like that. Then when he turned 16, he started to, to say and voice more that, that he was really struggling with his mental health. And probably like most parents locally, we thought that it, it, the process would be quite straightforward to access the mental health system for children. Going to the doctor and we thought it would just be an assessment and then he would, he would receive the, the care and support but as I said like a lot of other local families we found that that wasn't the case at all. It was so hard to access any support for him. We felt as a family that they, they weren't really taking things serious with Scott and even though we were seeing in the house how much he was struggling and we were really into them everything that was happening he still wasn't deemed like he was ill enough for to receive immediate support. In the May 2020 that's when Scott had his first attempt to take his life and even following that and everything else that Scott had um, presented with, they still didn't think he was high enough risk. So we were then left as a family just to kind of care for him ourselves. So following his appointment in May after his first attempt to take his life, Scott was placed on the waiting list for CAMS. We were told that it would be a minimum of 18 weeks before he even received a letter. He waited until the December to actually see somebody face to face. That was the 21st of December. So for all those months, Scott had struggled with maybe just a phone call every couple of weeks for somebody for CAMS and obviously us as support. In that time, we had another um, suicide attempt and his health just deteriorated rapidly. As I had said before, we just couldn't get help anywhere. We couldn't get support anywhere, even though we were screaming out and Scott was openly asking for support. He was actively trying to take his life. There still was no support there at all for us. He had his appointment at CAMS on the 21st of December and nine days later, Scott took his own life. He had went so long with no support that he obviously thought there was just no other way. In the weeks that followed Scott's suicide, loads of people contacted me through Messenger or sent me a text message or came up to me in the street and told me their story with their children or their child and just said that it was the same kind of story as what Scott's was. You know, they'd been trying hard to access support. They felt like the one had been taken serious or their child wasn't deemed ill enough. They didn't meet the criteria for the support for CAMS. As a family, we, we sat and we kind of thought, you know, there's, there has to be something locally. There has to be something better that can be put in place that can support the kids immediately. If they need it, if they're brave enough to ask for support, then they should receive it. So we decided to take the money that had been donated to us through the GoFundMe at the time when Scott died and we put it into a charity. And what we do is we pay now private counsellors or therapists to see the kids straight away. The kids still go to their, their GP and then the referral still sent through to CAMS. Once they've either been placed on the waiting list or they've been told that they, they don't meet the criteria for support, they can then contact us and we can step in and support meantime as a stepping stone so that no child's left for any length of time with no support at all, like what Scott was. The support that we put in place comes for private counsellors and therapists, which means that there's a better chance that the support can be given to the kids immediately. They don't need to wait any length of time. As a foundation as well, we work in partnership with Scott's own gym, Sparta Boxing Academy. We fully fund 
boot camps that run during the kids' holidays. So that alleviates the pressure from the parents to be able to afford it because every space is fully funded by Scots Foundation. As a family and as a foundation, we recognise the importance and the need for immediate support to be there for the local children that are suffering from poor mental health or suicidal ideation. Every penny that we receive to Scots Foundation goes towards securing the support that we've already established in the local area for local children. There's no formal criteria for support, so any child that is brave enough to ask for help and support receives support. Every referral that we receive is completely confidential and it's filtered through to the best therapist or counsellor. For more information or to access the support that we offer locally, you can contact us via our website or through email or through our social media platforms. Thanks for listening to Scott's story and the work that we now do in his memory. Our aims are to raise awareness of youth suicide and to support youths and children through mental health. And we hope that with your support and the continued support of the local people that we'll be able to do this for a long time. Let's go. Ah. Mm. Welcome to the main event. Yeah. Applying pressure, but I promise I ain't make a dent. Uh. In their heads, living free. I ain't paying rent. Wake up in the AM making cheese like Mercedes Benz. Mm. Whoa, mm. yeah. Mm. Please don't take offense. Uh. It isn't you, I'm just not interested in making friends. Uh. My biggest fear is finding out that this came and went. Uh. So go ahead, but I'm staying in. Okay. Drop a song and pop up on your phone like I was you two. Connected to the fans without a hand, I did it Bluetooth. The only time I come ashore is when they watching YouTube. Spinning with the drill, yeah. no wonder why my screws loose. Taking off and I can't stop, I beat them all by landslide. Houdini, I popped out of that box even with hands tied. Big dog like Sandlot, but it's real life, no fantasize. Count money, a damn lie, my hands clean, no sanitize. Whoa, had to switch up on the flow, gotta keep them on their toes. I move quick, I make the most, why they copy what I wrote? Follow everything I post, never trip about a clone. Cause they know what's a sheep to a goat. Yeah. Mm, welcome to the main event yeah. Applying pressure, but I promise I ain't make a dent uh, In their heads, living free, I ain't paying rent Wake up in the AM, making cheese like Mercedes Benz mm, Whoa, mm, ay, mm, please don't take offense uh, It isn't you, I'm just not interested in making friends uh, My biggest fear is finding out that this came and went uh, So go ahead, but I'm staying in <laughs> If you don't like me, better close your eyes, I'm about to shine Or take a picture when you see me, cause I doubt you fine Another like me, yeah, I'm one of one, no other son The way I'm blazing ass, I like the earth just got another sun <laughs> I did not even anti-social, are you so sure? Cause I only be hanging with goats, so they never told you I'm a soldier, then you ain't got nothing And so, ladies and gentlemen, for the over hundreds in attendance here at Ringside, for all those watching live on JATV, the officials are ready, the boxers are ready. Are you ready?
I'm Samantha Merrilies, I am Scott's proud ma and I'm also the founder of his charity, the Scott Martin Foundation. Scott was a lovely boy, he really, he was a wonderful person, he had a really big personality, really large character, he was the, the life and soul and that was apparent even for he was a, a small child. He was the type of person that even if you only met him once or you just met him briefly, you never forgot him, you always remembered him. He was really caring, he was just a lovely boy to have around. He was really family orientated, so he really loved like being around his family and get togethers or stuff like that. He loved that kind of thing. And he also loved being around his friends. At school, I would say Scott was never really academic. He struggled quite a lot through school, right from primary school right into high school. Anything sport, Scott excelled at. He was just natural. He was just a natural sports person. Boxing and football was obviously his main things, but any kind of sport at all, whether it be snowboarding, cycling, fishing, anything that he, he kind of put his hand to, he, he just, he was brilliant at it. Referee Joe Duffy stops this contest in round number two in favour of the winner, who is now Scottish novice schoolboy, Borno 405, 62 kilo champion in the blue corner, Scott Martin. Brilliant, man. Scott first became ill and started to voice what he was experiencing when he was, he was around about 15, coming up for 16 and a lot of the things the kind of doctors put down to just being like his age, hormones and things like that. Then when he turned 16, he started to, to say and voice more that, that he was really struggling with his mental health. And probably like most parents locally, we thought that it, it, the process would be quite straightforward to access the mental health system for children. Going to the doctor and we thought it would just be a, an assessment and then he would he would receive the, the care and support. But as I said, like a lot of other local families, we found that that wasn't the case at all. It was so hard to access any support for him. We felt as a family that they, they weren't really taking things serious with Scott. And even though we were seeing in the house how much he was struggling and we were really into them, everything that was happening, he still wasn't deemed like he was ill enough for to receive immediate support. In the May 2020, that's when Scott had his first attempt to take his life. And even following that, and everything else that Scott had um, presented with, they still didn't think he was high enough risk. So we were then left as a family just to kind of care for him ourselves. So following his appointment in May, after his first attempt to take his life, Scott was placed on the waiting list for CAMS. We were told that it would be a minimum of 18 weeks before he even received a letter. He waited until the December to actually see somebody face to face. That was the 21st of December. So for all those months, Scott had struggled with maybe just a phone call every couple of weeks for somebody for CAMS and obviously us as support. In that time, we had another um, suicide attempt and his health just deteriorated rapidly. As I had said before, we just couldn't get help anywhere. We couldn't get support anywhere. Even though we were screaming out and Scott was openly asking for support, he was actively trying to take his life. There still was no support there at all for us. He had his appointment at CAMS on the 21st of December and nine days later, Scott took his own life. He had went so long with no support that he obviously thought there was just no other way. In the weeks that followed Scott's suicide, Loads of people contacted me through Messenger or sent me a text message or came up to me in the Thank you. And ladies and gentlemen, would you please welcome our boxers to the ring! So 
So guys, welcome to the GBA Glasgow Box Academy's home show with me, Jim Alzad O'Neill. You're watching live on JTV Live. Uh, just about to go. First up will be Dylan Freya and Alex Good. Glasgow Box Academy versus Edge. Our ring announcer, Greg Lewis, in the ring. We begin this afternoon with a light welterweight contest number three two-minute rounds, sponsored by Gold Deck Decorators. And the referee in charge, please welcome from Barhead, Mr. Brian McCann. Introducing first, boxing out of the red corner, white black shorts with white and tartan trim, from the edge, Jeremy Glasgow, So we go first bout of the afternoon. Dylan Vidya in the blue corner. Boxing out, oh, it's good from the edge and the red. And here we go, round number one. So 11 bouts for you this afternoon. Early start there. Both boxers using that jab to get in. Dylan ducking down to the body when he can. See Alex good to edge boxer in the red. Trying to sneak in and get up and under some of those, those jabs. But Dylan keeping his composure, his rhythm. He's having a good rhythm, that's what he said. So you are watching, don't forget to click that like and subscribe button. You can support GTV Live. Means we can encourage you to do more, get out and see more clubs up and down Scotland. So we're at Nafari next week. It's also an afternoon show, it's on Saturday. This is three two minute rounds to kick us off. Dylan just getting out of the way of the ropes there, good work, but Alex keeping that pressure up. Both boxers remaining busy in this first round. Nice work there from the edge boxer. He's following up his lead hand very nicely. Final 10 seconds of round number one. Uh, so shout out to all the sponsors that have been supporting the bouts this afternoon. And they go back in the ring for round number two. So 
So Dillon. Media in the blue corner. Oh, it's good in the red. Glasgow Boxing Academy versus the edge. Boxers keeping that nice pace. Try to put a bit of pressure on each other. I think so far quite an unequal bout. So far, good matchup. Ellen get great head movement. He's needing it as Alex keeps busy using that jab. to watch his guard though he's got it up now nice wee left right there try to move to the body when he can like he needs to try and get up and under that's oh, his long range Ten seconds around number two. Well, another great round there to kick us off here at the Glasgow Box Academy home show. You'll see our sponsors scrolling along the bottom of the screen. If you are interested in supporting GTV Live through sponsorship, then do get in touch. Have a quick look at some of those sponsors, including our club sponsors. They're up on the screen now. And adding to that list, so we Spartans recently joined. And I mentioned Ella will be there next week. Niff Valley Boxing Club will be live for their home show next Saturday afternoon. Shout out to all our other sponsors, including the Western District, which has sanctioned this event. West is best. And here we go back in the ring for round number three, third and final round. Dylan, where you are, and Alex Good. Big shots now coming from Alex, he's keeping that pressure, being consistent throughout, leading with that. That lead jab, falling up nicely, and then again, nice combinations there. Keep him very, very busy. Going to get a count now. I've seen a wee bit of hesitation there, Darlene, so I think the referee's seen it as well. A referee restarting this bout. Darlene trying to get up and under. The referee keeping a close action. A close eye in the action, rather. Darren, a tough wee guy, but we've got to get another count. Like he just needs to get the guard up. Just watch. Alex is trying to turn up the pressure. Referee calls it. But great work there up until that point. He's, he's going to feel a bit hard done by. But I just think Alex just kept that, that pressure up in that, that third and final round. Uh, so we pass back to Gregory Houston in the ring with the official announcement. Guys, you're watching GT Vibes coverage of the Glasgow Box Academy home show here at the Glasgow Box Academy gym.
Uh, ladies and gentlemen, our favorite sponsor there is Gold Deck Decorators. Should we have someone from the sponsor to the ring, please? And ladies and gentlemen, please let's hear it from both boxers. If he has gone to stop the bank in round number three, the winner by RSC in the red corner, Alex Good! And please let's hear it for Dylan Villia! So guys, this interview is sponsored by Southpaw Boxing Socks. Ah, it's good from the edge. Um, first bout of the day, first stoppage of the day. How are you feeling? Yeah, it's good. Well, Enjoy it. Thankfully, I got the win, so trained hard. Um, quite a tough opponent, but I just think you, you kept your composure, consistency. Once you got in that rhythm, the third round uh, was just yours to take. Um, and I could kind of see it coming. I think the referee's seen maybe a bit of hesitation, Dylan's eyes as well. Uh, but were you confident you are going to get the win? Yeah, I was. I trained hard. Um, I thought I won every round, so, yeah, thank God. Uh, the jabs were relentless, man, That's what, and you were following up a great backhand and then again uh, with your left hand in. It's, it's, it's good to keep that pressure up, and you see by the third round it was just, I think, a bit overwhelming for him. Uh, who are we going to shout out to? Who's been supporting you? Uh, my brother, he's here watching me today, so. He boxing as well? No, nah, he didn't box. Oh, he's here supporting you? Right. Well, listen, let you go celebrate, thank you. Don't forget your medal, your, your trophy. Let's pass back in the ring. Carl Heron and George Parvin. Ladies and gentlemen, we continue with a 70 kilogram school contest. There were three one and a half minute rounds. Sponsored by Above All Roofing. The referee in charge, please welcome from Glasgow, Mr. David Edgar. <laughs> Introducing first, boxing into the red corner in white shorts with gold from Beef. Boxing Club in Canada Beef. Canada! Shorts with gold and silver from Glasgow Boxing Academy. Logan Spencer. Three one So you've got a change to the card. They're sort of messed it. Logan Simpson and the blue corner for Glasgow Boxing Academy and Caden is it and the red corner and I know Logan uh, well and I know Caden well so I'll try and be neutral quick start there from both boxers big left there landing from Caden Logan try to keep that pressure up big right there Referee David Edgar just getting in. We get a count in the favour of Caden in the red corner. Logan ready to go as David Edgar restarts this bout. Caden just fighting forward again, using that that reach. Logan fighting back, boxing back rather. Turn into a bit of a scrap between these two. But Logan, they try to claw back this round. And 
Caden still trying to push forward. Referee splitting both boxers up, restarting about. Final 10 seconds around number one. Woof! Uh, wow! Around that was. Uh, you seen obviously Caden getting the the count in his favour. Logan think that sparked, ignited a wee spark in, in him, um, and looked to try and claw back as many points as he could. Um, interested to see how we're going to go forward whether Caden can keep up that stamina. I always say the beef boxers run a lot, but so did the Glasgow Boxing Academy. I know the first six weeks I think um, of their season they're at running. Um, so it may just come down to who can keep that stamina right to the very, very end. Guys, you're watching GT Vibes coverage of the Glasgow Boxing Academy home show with me, Jamie Alexander O'Neill. Almost ready to go back in the ring. Caden does have these big power punches, but Logan, I know, can dig deep. Nice movement there for Logan as he steps back. But Caden still firing straight. Right, he's looking for an uppercut as well. A few combinations getting in. Logan just pulling back when he needs to. Get his guard up. Nice work there. The blue corner. But Caden getting a bit scrappy when he pushes in. Referee keeping a close eye on this. This cow gets behind the home box up. Logan still stalking his opponent. Caden around the ring. Caden try to fire in with a wee sneaky left. Both swinging, landing on the arms. Oh, Logan try to keep that pressure up. Said he was stalking his opponent around the ring, I think. Possibly this is his round. Um, could come down to the third and final round. Just Caden needs to watch, he's not getting involved in a scrap. Logan just landed just after the bell. Uh, great work up from both boxes again. I think this evens it out to one apiece. In my estimation, we'll see what happens in round number three. So it's really digging deep now, they both need this round. Big shots landing from both. We spoke of the big power punches that come um, from Caden. But Logan, after that, that count against him in the first round, he's really, really stepped up. He wants to win. That's put in front of his home crowd.
Oh, both these guys really leaving it all in the ring. And we are about to find it in just a moment. The one up. Well done there, both boxing them, hug it out. Great respect between the two of them. We'll pass back to Greg Houston in the ring with the official announcement Logan Simpson, Glasgow Boxing Academy, the Blue Corner, and Caden is it from Beef Boxing and the Red. Guys, this interview is sponsored by Southpaw Boxing Socks. Uh, I think the only beef boxer that does the like interviews, but that's what happens when you win, my man. Um, great bout in there against a, a tough opponent. I think he, you got to count in your favour in round number one. He tried to like keep that pressure up, get a bit scrappy at times. I know you were trying to keep to the jabs and, and keep to the boxing. Big power shots coming for you. Um, how are you feeling? Trying some up for me. Well, because I've been out for that long, my stamina dropped a bit. And it's been kind of difficult to get back up to how it was, but... Uh, it's been I said that, man. I said um, beatboxing, I know you're big runners. Um, your stamina always gets you right to the end of the, the third round. Glasgow Box Academy does their fair share of running as well. Um, but great, great matchup. Came down to a 3 2 split decision. Did you think you'd you done enough to, to win it? Yeah, I did. But that other boy, he's quite good. I think he'll, I think he'll fight again, that, but... Well, you've uh, got to show me the fourth. Maybe try and maybe make a wee rematch. Um, but what's the, the plan uh, going forward? Do we go see next home show and then yeah, we break in the summer? Got a fight in the 11th of May at Galley Shield. And I don't know about home show quite yet, but yeah. Uh, who are we going to shout out to? Uh, just my coaches, my friends, my family, everybody. Right, my man, let's how you go celebrate and I'll catch up with you shortly. My man, take care. International star referee, Mr. Jim Smith. Into the same first. Boxing into the red corner. In the white shorts with gold and blue. From North Glasgow Boxing Club, Shin Oi! And in the blue corner, in black shorts with gold. From Glasgow Boxing Academy.
This is North Glasgow's Jin Lee in the red corner. And Aidan Glasgow, representing Glasgow Boxing Academy in the blue. Hey, quick start, both boxers, international star referee in the ring, Mr. Jim Smith. Now we did speak to Jin Lee the last Glasgow Boxing Academy home show, uh, he got a win. Aiden Glasgow, using that ring space well. Both tough boxers, they're weighing in on at around 76. Kilograms. <laughs> nice wee uh, bounce in his his step there for Jin Lee, the red corner. Jim Smith, just getting the ball boxers to break, so don't hold on. Middle 10 seconds around number one. You're watching JT Vibes coverage of the Glasgow Box Academy home show here at the Glasgow Box Academy gym. We meet Jamie Alexander O'Neill. Uh, we are on the third bout of this afternoon. Going into round number two if you're just joining us. Uh, hit that like, subscribe to the thumbs up button. Uh, also, give us a few shout outs in the, the chat if you're not watching on your TV. What we'll you are paying your uh, TV license? For that TV you're watching us <laughs> Jin Lee in the red corner representing North Glasgow and Eddie Glasgow in the blue spot from both boxers, keep their distance when they need to get a wee bit tangled up here and there. That's to be expected, big power swings coming from Jin Lee. Okay, the guys will use a little jab to keep a bit of distance between him and his opponent. Moving around that ring nicely, getting away from the ropes. And he's just swinging in, trying to move to the body. Referee Jim Smith keeping a close eye. He's pulled both boxers to, uh, apart. So there may be a, a clash of heads. Chief Medical Officer Dr. Scott Henderson just assessing the damage. 
decision is going to be made here. So guys, as always, we just got away. If the doctor is checking over any of the boxers, so you get to see my lovely face. Uh, and that's an end to that, looks like. Blue corner, we'll take the win, we'll just pass back to the ring. Our sponsor there, Nineties Boxing. So, if we can have some of our sponsors to the ring to make the presentations. Well, ladies and gentlemen, please let's hear it for both boxers. <laughs> In ring number two, the referee has had to call stop the contest due to a couple of C from our boxers. This was due to an accidental head clash. So in this case we go to the judges' scores where we have a 3-1 split decision for the winner in the right corner, Jerry And please let's hear it for Aiden Glasgow. And uh, making the presentations there are for our sponsor, Mighty Boxing, former Scottish middleweight champion, Magic Marker. Uh, so this interview is sponsored by Southpaw Boxing Socks. Uh, Jin Lee, um, you're just at the ring. I know you need to go to the hospital just to get that cleared up. Good news is the hospital is only a, a few metres along the road. Um, but got the stoppage, accidental head clash, um, went to the scorecards, you got the win. Um, how are you feeling? I feel good. I feel very good. But sorry, I couldn't really. I mean, this was end by injury. I got injury on my airborne, but it's all good. I feel good. Thank you very much, I mean, I treat hard to Yeah, man, um, and big power punches coming in, the, the jabs were brilliant. Um, against a tough opponent, he started moving around, yeah, he started yeah, finding his rhythm. Good, Just good. unfortunate with the head clash, it, it, yeah. it came down, but um, listen, who are we giving a shout out to? Who's been supporting you? Joko, thank you, Joko, thank you, Alan. The North Glasgow boxing gym is very good, people are quite nice. I mean, I think all the people are quite nice, but this is where I do my training, so I work hard, so, well, Thank you, thank you, Jimmy, as well. Sorry, man. Listen, I'll let you go. Um, no celebrate yet. Go get cleaned up, yeah, and then celebrate after that, my man. Generally, okay. thank, thank you. you. Take care, yeah. by Glasgow Caring City. The referee in charge of this one, please welcome from Renfrewshire, Mr. Paul O'Connor. <laughs> Introducing first, boxing into the red corner. Great black shorts with green from the Royal Boxing Club in Edinburgh, Mark Mickelson. And in the blue corner, in black shorts with red from Glasgow Boxing Academy, Shazam Amin!
Shahzad Ahmed in the blue corner. He's boxing Mark Mickelson from the Royal Boxing Club. You see a lot of power coming uh, for Mark in the red. Shahzad just keeping a wee step back when he needs to try to get up and under those long arms of Mark. Nice, nice left. They're landing. But Mark firing back. He's not going to take none of that. So George really nice a slip. <laughs> Referee rather. <laughs> it's been a long weekend. Forgive me as usual. Uh, shout out to uh, Joey. I can do it. Are you at training at the day? We get the Western District team training. A uh, great first round there for both boxers. We'll have a look at our sponsors, if you don't mind. Uh, they do support our work. So you see know, up the screen, Miles Electrical, Western District of Boxing Scotland. Eco Broker, Bout Time Boxing. This is actually a Bout Time Boxing ring. Have a look uh, if you need a ring. If you're looking for, for lighting, if you're looking for sound equipment, uh, then get in touch with them. Bout Time Boxing. Uh, they are JTV Live sponsor. Then we have our some of our JTV Live business sponsors. And some of our club sponsors. Two new ones added to that list. So we Spartans and Nafari. We'll be at Nafari next week. So you all get ready. We're coming. Coming down to Dumfries. Big great right there landing twice. So in the ring, Shaz Adamid, Mark Mickelson, Glasgow Boxing Academy in the blue corner, the Royal Boxing Club in the red. Big right there landing, he's got a nice wee bounce, oh, switched it up with the left. He's looking for these big swings, Mark re retaliating with a few of his own. Yeah, count in favour of the red corner. He's bound to with these big swings, both guys. Look like they're looking for a big, big knockout. Big shots are landing again. Last 10 seconds of round number two. Shazad was taking me a step back earlier. He needs to get back into that rhythm. I know he's looking to pick up points, try to move to the body. Another nice round there. Oh, well, where's my, um, oh, there's my display and all my sponsors. So let's uh, have a look at the card. Uh, there's been a few changes. I don't know if this is the final bout before the interval. I will find that out. Uh, we're just above that red interval line. Uh, Shazad Ahmed and Mark Mickelson. 
still get boxers coming from Port Glasgow, Greenock, Craig Miller, The Shire, Duries and Barhead. Shout out to all the sponsors that have been supporting the boats this afternoon. Dean Edwards Photography, Gal Deck Get Decorators. Was it Josie English? Above all, roofing. 90s boxing. Glasgow, the Caden City. We'll go through some more later on. Back in the ring, third and final round. Shazad Ahmed in the blue corner and Mark Mickelson in the red. Get another count, favour the red corner. He's looking to unload. Referee starts this bout. We are an ever in the stream. Another trip there. Uh, Aaron, I'm about to find out um, because it's not on my list. But I see your your team just to my my right. Just be one second. I'll let you just keep an eye on the action in the ring. So, Aaron, I'm not giving you an answer unless you click um, like. So, before we go back in the ring, uh, if you ever we look at this card, uh, one second, one second, one second. Uh, if you ever we look at the card, where it says Keaton Simmons from the Shire, as well, Jake will be boxing from Northwest. So. Pass back in the rings, we get the official announcement. So this interview is sponsored by Southpaw Boxing Socks. Uh, Mark, just hit the ring. Great performance. Get two counts in your favour. Um, it was only really going to go one way. How are you feeling? I feel good. I feel good. I feel strong. Only took the fight on Monday. So I wasn't as fit as I should have been, but a few daft mistakes, but I'm getting there. I'm proving every time. Wow, it was great to watch. Um, what's the plan going forward? What's, we're going to see you next. S Scottish. I'm aiming for development being Scottish. Maybe get one in between before then because I'm sitting on five fights now. So that's the aim, Scottish, at the end of October. Oh, you man. And who's been supporting you? Are we going to shout with you? Oh, just the lads at the Royal uh, Junior, Mikey, Tyler, Greg as well. All the other boys as well. It's been great. Oh, you man. Listen, go celebrate. Thanks for chatting Thanks to me. Thanks for coming here on Boxing. Cheers.
So guys, we're going to uh, go for a uh, wee break. Uh, we'll be back as soon as we can. Um, I'll leave you with a shot of what we've got coming up. In fact, I won't. I'm going to cut away to the, the adverts, I think. Uh, we'll be back soon. I'm Samantha Merrilies. I am Scott's proud ma, and I'm also the founder of his charity, the Scott Martin Foundation. Scott was a lovely boy. He really, he was a wonderful person. He had a really big personality, really large character. He was the, the life and soul, and that was apparent even for he was a, a small child. He was the type of person that, even if you only met him once, or you just met him briefly, you never forgot him, you always remembered him. He was really caring, he was just a lovely boy to have around. He was really family orientated, so he really loved like being around his family and get togethers or stuff like that. He loved that kind of thing. And he also loved being around his friends. At school, I would say Scott was never really academic. He struggled quite a lot through school, right from primary school right into high school. Anything sport, Scott excelled at. He was just natural. He was just a natural sports person. Boxing and football was obviously his main things, but any kind of sport at all, whether it be snowboarding, cycling, fishing, anything that he, he kind of put his hand to, he, he just, he was brilliant at it. Referee Joe Duffy stops this contest in round number two in favour of the winner, who is now Scottish novice schoolboy, Borno 405, 62 kilo champion, in the blue corner, Scott Martin. Brilliant, man. Scott first became ill and started to voice what he was experiencing when he was, he was around about 15, coming up for 16 and a lot of the things the kind of doctors put down to just being like his age, hormones and things like that. Then when he turned 16, he started to, to say and voice more that, that he was really struggling with his mental health. And probably like most parents locally, we thought that it, it, the process would be quite straightforward to access the mental health system for children. Going to the doctor and we thought it would just be a, an assessment and then he would he would receive the, the care and support. But as I said, like a lot of other local families, we found that that wasn't the case at all. It was so hard to access any support for him. We felt as a family that they, they weren't really taking things serious with Scott. And even though we were seeing in the house how much he was struggling and we were really into them, everything that was happening, he still wasn't deemed like he was ill enough for to receive immediate support. In the May 2020, that's when Scott had his first attempt to take his life. And even following that, and everything else that Scott had um, presented with, they still didn't think he was high enough risk. So we were then left as a family just to kind of care for him ourselves. So following his appointment in May, after his first attempt to take his life, Scott was placed on the waiting list for CAMS. We were told that it would be a minimum of 18 weeks before he even received a letter. He waited until the December to actually see somebody face to face. That was the 21st of December. So for all those months, Scott had struggled with maybe just a phone call every couple of weeks for somebody for CAMS and obviously us as support. In that time, we had another um, suicide attempt and his health just deteriorated rapidly. As I had said before, we just couldn't get help anywhere. We couldn't get support anywhere. Even though we were screaming out and Scott was openly asking for support, he was actively trying to take his life. There still was no support there at all for us. He had his appointment at CAMS on the 21st of December and nine days later, Scott took his own life. He had went so long with no support that he obviously thought there was just no other way. In the weeks that followed Scott's suicide, Loads of people contacted me through Messenger or sent me a text message or came up to me in the street and told me their story with their children or their child and just said that it was the same kind of story as what Scott's was. You know, they'd been trying hard to access support. They felt like the one had been taken serious or their child wasn't deemed ill enough. They didn't meet the criteria for the support for CAMS. As a family, we, we sat and we kind of thought, you know, there's there has to be something locally. There has to be something better that can be put in place, that can support the kids immediately. If they need it, if they're brave enough to ask for support, then they should receive it. So we decided to take the money that had been donated to us through the GoFundMe at the time when Scott died, and we put it into a charity. And what we do is we pay now private counsellors or therapists to see the kids straight away. The kids still go to their, their GP, and then the referral still sent through to CAMS. Once they've either been placed on the waiting list or they've been told that they, they don't meet the criteria for support, 
they can then contact us and we can step in and support mean time as a stepping stone so that no child's left for any length of time with no support at all like what Scott was. The support that we put in place comes for private counsellors and therapists which means that there's a better chance that the support can be given to the kids immediately. They don't need to wait any length of time. As a foundation as well we work in partnership with Scott's Own Gym, Sparta Boxing Academy. We fully fund boot camps that run during the kids' holidays. So that alleviates the pressure from the parents to be able to afford it because every space is fully funded by Scots Foundation. As a family and as a foundation, we recognise the importance and the need for immediate support to be there for the local children that are suffering from poor mental health or suicidal ideation. Every penny that we receive to Scots Foundation goes towards securing the support that we've already established in the local area for local children. There's no formal criteria for support, so any child that is brave enough to ask for help and support receives support. Every referral that we receive is completely confidential and it's filtered through to the best therapist or counsellor. For more information or to access the support that we offer locally, you can contact us via our website or through email or through our social media platforms. Thanks for listening to Scott's story and the work that we now do in his memory. Our aims are to raise awareness of youth suicide and to support youths and children through mental health. And we hope that with your support and the continued support of the local people that we'll be able to do this for a long time. Let's go. Welcome to the main event yeah. Applying pressure but I promise they ain't make a dent In their heads living free, I ain't paying rent Wake up in the AM making G's like Mercedes Benz Whoa, yeah, please don't take offense It isn't you, I'm just not interested in making friends My biggest fear is finding out that this came and went So go ahead, but I'm staying in okay. Drop a song and pop up on your phone like I was you two Connected to the fans without a hand, I did it Bluetooth The only time I come ashore is when they watching YouTube Spinning with the drill, yeah. no wonder why my screws loose Taking off and I can't stop, I beat them all by landslide Houdini, I popped out of that box even with hands tied Big dog like Sandlot, but it's real life, no fantasize Count money a damn lie, my hands clean, no sanitized Whoa, had to switch up on the flow, gotta keep them on their toes I move quick, I make the most, why they copy what I wrote? Follow everything I post, never trip about a clone Cause they know what's a sheep to a goat yeah. Mm, welcome to the main event yeah. Applying pressure, but I promise they ain't make a dent In their heads, living free, I ain't paying rent Wake up in the AM, making G's like Mercedes Benz Whoa, hey, please don't take offense It isn't you, I'm just not interested in making friends My biggest fear is finding out that this came and went So go ahead, but I'm staying in If you don't like me, better close your eyes, I'm about to shine Or take a picture when you see me, cause I doubt you fine Another like me, yeah, I'm one of one, no other sun The way I'm blazing ass, I like the earth just got another sun I did not even anti-social, are you so sure? Cause I only be hanging with goats, so they never told you I'm a soldier, and you ain't got nothing And so, ladies and gentlemen, for the Zola hundreds in attendance here at ringside, for all those watching live on JA TV, the officials are ready, the boxers are ready. Are you ready?
I'm Samantha Merrilies, I am Scott's proud ma and I'm also the founder of his charity, the Scott Martin Foundation. Scott was a lovely boy, he really, he was a wonderful person, he had a really big personality, really large character, he was the, the life and soul and that was apparent even if he was a, a small child. He was the type of person that even if you only met him once or you just met him briefly, you never forgot him, you always remembered him. He was really caring, he was just a lovely boy to have around. He was really family orientated, so he really loved like being around his family and get togethers or stuff like that. He loved that kind of thing. And he also loved being around his friends. At school, I would say Scott was never really academic. He struggled quite a lot through school, right from primary school right into high school. Anything sport, Scott excelled at. He was just natural. He was just a natural sports person. Boxing and football was obviously his main things, but any kind of sport at all, whether it be snowboarding, cycling, fishing, anything that he, he kind of put his hand to, he, he just, he was brilliant at it. Referee Joe Duffy stops this contest in round number two in favour of the winner, who is now Scottish novice schoolboy, Borno 405, 62 kilo champion in the blue corner, Scott Martin. Brilliant, man. Scott first became ill and started to voice what he was experiencing when he was, he was around about 15, coming up for 16 and a lot of the things the kind of doctors put down to just being like his age, hormones and things like that. Then when he turned 16, he started to, to say and voice more that, that he was really struggling with his mental health. And probably like most parents locally, we thought that it, it, the process would be quite straightforward to access the mental health system for children. Going to the doctor and we thought it would just be an assessment and then he would, he would receive the, the care and support. But as I said, like a lot of other local families, we found that that wasn't the case at all. It was so hard to access any support for him. We felt as a family that they, they weren't really taking things serious with Scott. And even though we were seeing in the house how much he was struggling and we were really into them, everything that was happening, he still wasn't deemed like he was ill enough for to receive immediate support. In the May 2020, that's when Scott had his first attempt to take his life. And even following that and everything else that Scott had um, presented with, they still didn't think he was high enough risk. So we were then left as a family just to kind of care for him ourselves. So following his appointment in May after his first attempt to take his life, Scott was placed on the waiting list for CAMS. We were told that it would be a minimum of 18 weeks before he even received a letter. He waited until the December to actually see somebody face to face. That was the 21st of December. So for all those months, Scott had struggled with maybe just a phone call every couple of weeks for somebody for CAMS and obviously us as support. In that time, we had another um, suicide attempt and his health just deteriorated rapidly. As I had said before, we just couldn't get help anywhere. We couldn't get support anywhere, even though we were screaming out and Scott was openly asking for support. He was actively trying to take his life. There still was no support there at all for us. He had his appointment at CAMS on the 21st of December and nine days later, Scott took his own life. He had went so long with no support that he obviously thought there was just no other way. In the weeks that followed Scott's suicide, Loads of people contacted me through Messenger or sent me a text message or came up to me in the street and told me their story with their children or their child and just said that it was the same kind of story as what Scott's was. You know, they'd been trying it hard to access support. They felt like the one had been taken serious or their child wasn't deemed ill enough. They didn't meet the criteria for the support for CAMS. As a family, we, we sat and we kind of thought, you know, there's there has to be something locally. There has to be something better that can be put in place, that can support the kids immediately. If they need it, if they're brave enough to ask for support, then they should receive it. So we decided to take the money that had been donated to us through the GoFundMe at the time when Scott died, and we put it into a charity. And what we do is we pay now private counsellors or therapists 
to see the kids straight away. The kids still go to their, their GP and then the, the referral is still sent through to CAMS. Once they've either been placed on the waiting list or they've been told that they, they don't meet the criteria for support, they can then contact us and we can step in and support mean time as a stepping stone so that no child's left for any length of time with no support at all, like what Scott was. The support that we put in place comes for private counsellors and therapists, which means that there's a better chance that the support can be given to the kids immediately. They don't need to wait any length of time. As a foundation as well, we work in partnership with Scott's Own Gym, Sparta Boxing Academy. We fully fund boot camps that run during the kids' holidays. So that alleviates the pressure from the parents to be able to afford it because every space is fully funded by Scott's Foundation. As a family and as a foundation, we recognise the importance and the need for immediate support to be there for the local children that are suffering from poor mental health or suicidal ideation. Every penny that we receive to Scott's Foundation goes towards securing the support that we've already established in the local area for local children. There's no formal criteria for support, so any child that is brave enough to ask for help and support receives support. Every referral that we receive is completely confidential and it's filtered through to the best therapist or counsellor. For more information or to access the support that we offer locally, you can contact us via our website or through email or through our social media platforms. Thanks for listening to Scott's story and the work that we now do in his memory. Our aims are to raise awareness of youth suicide and to support youths and children through mental health. And we hope that with your support and the continued support of the local people that will be able to do this for a long time. Let's go. Ah. Mm. Welcome to the main event. Yeah. Applying pressure, but I promise they ain't make a dent. Uh. In their heads, living free. I ain't paying rent. Wake up in the AM, making cheese like Mercedes Benz. Mm. Whoa, mm. yeah. Mm. Please don't take offense. Uh. It isn't you, I'm just not interested in making friends. Uh. My biggest fear is finding out that this came and went. Uh. So go ahead, but I'm staying in. Okay. Drop a song and pop up on your phone like I was you two. Connected to the fans without a hand, I did it Bluetooth. The only time I come ashore is when they watching YouTube. Spinning with the drill, no wonder why my screws loose. Taking off and I can't stop, I beat them all by landslide. Houdini, I popped out of that box even with hands tied. Big dog like Sandlot, but it's real life, no fantasize. Count money a damn lie, my hands clean, no sanitize. Whoa, had to switch up on the flow, gotta keep them on their toes. I move quick, I make the most, why they copy what I wrote? Follow everything I post, never trip about a clone. Cause they know what's a sheep to a goat. Yeah. Mm, welcome to the main event yeah. Applying pressure, but I promise they ain't make a dent In their heads, living free, I ain't paying rent Wake up in the AM, making cheese like Mercedes Benz Whoa, hey, please don't take offense It isn't you, I'm just not interested in making friends My biggest fear is finding out that this came and went So go ahead, but I'm staying in If you don't like me, better close your eyes, I'm about to shine Or take a picture when you see me, cause I doubt you fine Another like me, yeah, I'm one of one, no other son The way I'm blazing ass, I like the earth, just got another sun I did not even anti-social, are you so sure? Cause I only be hanging with goats, so they never told you I'm a soldier, then you ain't got nothing And so, ladies and gentlemen, for the Zola hundreds in attendance here at ringside, for all those watching live on JA TV, the officials are ready, the boxers are ready. Are you ready?
judges, you have a unanimous decision. The winner who said, Will you call a Scott Scott Schoolgirl, 44 kilo champion in the blue gold line? I am Samantha Merrilies, I am Scott's proud ma and I'm also the founder of his charity, the Scott Martin Foundation. Scott was a lovely boy, he really, he was a wonderful person, he had a really big personality, really large character, he was the, the life and soul and that was apparent even for he was a, a small child. He was the type of person that even if you only met him once or you just met him briefly, you never forgot him, you always remembered him. He was really caring, he was just a lovely boy to have around. He was really family orientated, so he really loved like being around his family and get togethers or stuff like that. He loved that kind of thing. And he also loved being around his friends. At school, I would say Scott was never really academic. He struggled quite a lot through school, right from primary school right into high school. Anything sport, Scott excelled at. He was just natural. He was just a natural sports person. Boxing and football was obviously his main things, but any kind of sport at all, whether it be snowboarding, cycling, fishing, anything that he, he kind of put his hand to, he, he just, he was brilliant at it. Referee Joe Duffy stops this contest in round number two in favour of the winner, who is now Scottish novice schoolboy, Borno 405, 62 kilo champion in the blue corner, Scott Martin. Brilliant, man. Scott first became ill and started to voice what he was experiencing when he was, he was around about 15, coming up for 16. And a lot of the things the kind of doctors put down to just being like his age, hormones and things like that. Then when he turned 16, he started to, to say and voice more that, that he was really struggling with his mental health. And probably like most parents locally, we thought that it, it, the process would be quite straightforward to access the mental health system for children. Going to the doctor and we thought it would just be an assessment and then he would he would receive the, the care and support. But as I said, like a lot of other local families, we found that that wasn't the case at all. It was so hard to access any support for him. We felt as a family that they, they weren't really taking things serious with Scott. And even though we were seeing in the house how much he was struggling and we were really into them, everything that was happening, he still wasn't deemed like he was ill enough for to receive immediate support. In the May 2020, that's when Scott had his first attempt to take his life. And even following that, and everything else that Scott had um, presented with, they still didn't think he was high enough risk. So we were then left as a family just to kind of care for him ourselves. So following his appointment in May, after his first attempt to take his life, Scott was placed on the waiting list for CAMS. We were told that it would be a minimum of 18 weeks before he even received a letter. He waited until the December to actually see somebody face to face. That was the 21st of December. So for all those months, Scott had struggled with maybe just a phone call every couple of weeks for somebody for CAMS and obviously us as support. In that time, we had another um, suicide attempt and his health just deteriorated rapidly. As I had said before, we just couldn't get help anywhere. We couldn't get support anywhere, even though we were screaming out and Scott was openly asking for support. He was actively trying to take his life. There still was no support there at all for us. He had his appointment at CAMS on the 21st of December and nine days later, Scott took his own life. He had went so long with no support that he obviously thought there was just no other way. In the weeks that followed Scott's suicide, Loads of people contacted me through Messenger or sent me a text message or came up to me in the street and told me their story with their children or their child and just said that it was the same kind of story as what Scots was. You know, they'd been trying hard to access support. They felt like the one had been taken serious or their child wasn't deemed ill enough. They didn't meet the criteria for the support for CAMS. As a family, we, we sat and we kind of thought, you know, there's there has to be something locally. There has to be something better that can be put in place, that can support the kids immediately. If they need it, if they're brave enough to ask for support, then they should receive it. So we decided to take the money that had been donated to us through the GoFundMe at the time when Scott died, and we put it into a charity. And what we do is we pay now private counsellors or therapists to see the kids straight away. The kids still go to their, their GP, and then the, the referral still sent through to CAMS. Once they've either been placed on the waiting list or they've been told that they, they don't meet the criteria for support, 
they can then contact us and we can step in and support mean time as a stepping stone so that no child's left for any length of time with no support at all like what Scott was. The support that we put in place comes for private counsellors and therapists which means that there's a better chance that the support can be given to the kids immediately. They don't need to wait any length of time. As a foundation as well we work in partnership with Scott's Own Gym, Sparta Boxing Academy. We fully fund boot camps that run during the kids holidays so that alleviates the pressure from the parents to be able to afford it because every space is fully funded by Scott's Foundation. As a family and as a foundation we recognise the importance and the need for immediate support to be there for the local children that are suffering from poor mental health or suicidal ideation. Every penny that we receive to Scott's Foundation goes towards securing the support that we've already established in the local area for local children. There's no formal criteria for support, so any child that is brave enough to ask for help and support receives support. Every referral that we receive is completely confidential and it's filtered through to the best therapist or counsellor. For more information or to access the support that we offer locally, you can contact us via our website or through email or through our social media platforms. Thanks for listening to Scott's story and the work that we now do in his memory. Our aims are to raise awareness of youth suicide and to support youths and children through mental health. And we hope that with your support and the continued support of the local people that we'll be able to do this for a long time. Let's go. Ah. Mm. Welcome to the main event. Yeah. Applying pressure, but I promise I ain't make it then. Uh. In their heads, living free. I ain't paying rent. Wake up in the AM making cheese like Mercedes Benz. Mm. Whoa, mm. yeah. Mm. Please don't take offense. Uh. It isn't you, I'm just not interested in making friends. Uh. My biggest fear is finding out that this came and went. Uh. So go ahead, but I'm staying in. Okay. Drop a song and pop up on your phone like I was you two. Connected to the fans without a hand, I did it Bluetooth. The only time I come ashore is when they watching YouTube. Spinning with the drill, yeah. no wonder why my screws loose. Taking off and I can't stop, I beat them all by landslide. Houdini, I popped out of that box even with hands tied. Big dog like Sandlot, but it's real life, no fantasize. Count money a damn lie, my hands clean, no sanitize. Whoa, had to switch up on the flow, gotta keep them on their toes. I move quick, I make the most, why they copy what I wrote? Follow everything I post, never trip about a clone. Cause they know what's a sheep to a goat. Yeah. Mm, welcome to the main event yeah. Applying pressure, but I promise I ain't make it then uh, In their heads, living free, I ain't paying rent Wake up in the AM, making cheese like Mercedes Benz mm, Whoa, mm, hey, mm, please don't take offense uh, It isn't you, I'm just not interested in making friends uh, My biggest fear is finding out that this came and went uh, So go ahead, but I'm staying in uh, If you don't like me, better close your eyes, I'm about to shine Or take a picture when you see me, cause I doubt you find Another like me, yeah, I'm one of one, no other sun The way I'm blazing ass, I like the earth just got another sun I did not even anti-social, are you so sure? Cause I only be hanging with goats, so they never told you I'm a soldier, and you ain't got nothing And so, ladies and gentlemen, for the Zola hundreds in attendance here at ringside, for all those watching live on JATV, the officials are ready, the boxers are ready. Are you ready?
So while Greg does the raffle, we're going to let you see what's going on uh, in the ring. We're here, so we might as well so you get something to look at. This is the number you're looking for. So first up, we're going to do the gym membership. You won't see me though. Three one six to three two zero. Three one six to three two zero. Ah, look at all. Double check that in a minute. We'll draw next for the booze. Got a bag of beer, wine, and cider and other stuff. Oh, is that the winner down there for the gym membership? Do you want to come up? Come on up. Right, we'll draw the, the next one in the meantime. That's 351 to 355. 351 to 355. Do you want to come down on each side? And so the big prize for buying women's side shorts. 376 to 380. <laughs> 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 Okay, thank you there. We're going to take the raffle. Gary, okay, Barry, where are you? Do you leave? Yeah, get here. So we're going to have Gary Port and Barry Murphy just join us in the ring quickly. And we'll invite uh, guys from Glasgow Boxing Academy to the ring. A special presentation for the coaches. Tradition and they show the boxers, they like to show their appreciation for the work these folks have put in. And this year, we've gone for them a nice display log signed by Sugar Ray Leonard.
So guys, welcome back to Glasgow Box Academy Home Show live on JTV Live with me, Jamie Alexander O'Neill. Shout out to all our JTV Live sponsors. Thank you so much for your support. Let's have a look at some of those sponsors. Good and all our JTV Live club sponsors. Clubs uh, can sponsor JTV Live starting at 150 or 300 if you want a promo package included. So we Spartans recently joined our club sponsors, as did Niff Valley Boxing Club. We'll be there next week for their home show. This box event is sanctioned by the Western District Boxing Scotland. They are one of our business sponsors, along with Mills Electrical, the Eco Broker, and Bout Time Boxing. And that is their ring. Get in touch with Bout Time Boxing if you're looking for ring, uh, AV equipment, a ring announcer. Don't tell Greg. Well, don't tell any of them. For part of me. Some of our business sponsors up the screen as well. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, give a second hand for the just a moment. Just check it real good out there, box is ready. Are you all ready to go with the second half? Uh, I think Dylan Joyce and Hayden Turner will be kicking us off. As a change to this card, Kieran Simmons will not be boxing. Uh, Jake Love will be boxing instead. Let's pass back to Greg as we just wait for the boxing to kick off. Looks as though we'll be two minutes for we're ready. Let's be back in a second.
Fed Chain. Referee is Mr. Brian McCann. Introducing first boxing end of the red corner with black shorts with yellow from Port Glasgow Victoria Boxing Club, Hayden Turner! And the blue corner with black shorts with gold from Glasgow Boxing Academy. He is a Scottish Development Championship silver medalist, Dylan Jones! As I said, in turn on Dylan Joyce, the Glasgow Box Academy in the blue corner, and Hayden Turner from Port Glasgow in the red. Dylan Joyce keeping that pressure up. Aiden Turner on southpaw. Dylan throwing those straight left rights. Just need to keep that pressure up. Dylan just needs to keep an eye on Hayden's response though. Get that pressure going. Final 10 seconds around number one. It's round number two, uh, Dylan Joyce in the blue corner for Glasgow Boxing Academy and Hayden Turner from Port Glasgow in the red. Nice 
nice work here from Dylan again. He's finding these wee opportunities and he's taking them. But he didn't. That south post stands. They're both keeping busy. Both finding some nice big shots. Referee keeping an eye. What's going on? Tough, tough boxers in this ring, I'll tell you that. Better 10 seconds around number two. Uh, coming up with Thomas uh, Flanagan and Ben Garlic up from Greenock. As a Erin Lua and Paul Parks from Kate Miller. Charles Towers and Jake Love from North West. Toby Connolly and Joe McClure from Dooney's. And then topping the bill, Tala Khan. And for today, Sean Main Event Moon. Well, Dean had the, the Main Event Moon um, title. Brothers here supporting them. The final round, that's first out after the interval. Dylan has done great against us. So far from Port Glasgow. Can be tricky if you're not used to the, the stance and getting in where you need to be. A few bit scrappy at times, but just a clash of styles. He didn't try to keep that pressure off himself with Dylan from those big, big shots, finding a lot of success. Block there, but he didn't. still keeping that that pressure up, still pushing forward, doing well. I think Devon's just overwhelming him. Now we're going to get a count in Devon's favour. He starts his bout, he's going to the final 10 seconds. Wow, great work there from both boxers. We'll pass to Gregory Houston in the ring with official announcement.
ladies and gentlemen, please let's hear it from both ball stars. <laughs> After a few ends, the winner by unanimous decision in the blue corner. Uh, please let's hear it for Hayden Turner! Uh, so this interview is sponsored by Southpaw Boxing Socks, darling. Um, kicked off the second half of the Glasgow Boxing Academy Home Show. Um, great one, very consistent performance. We so really um, kept that pressure up throughout. How are you feeling? Brilliant. Great to go again. <laughs> and I think the crowd was needing us. We needed a, a GBA one. Um, and you pulled it off uh, nicely, man. Honestly, brilliant performance. Um, what's the plan of where we're going to see you next? Uh, probably in Overseas Group B or something. Or Westerns next year. So um, you're going to take a wee break, maybe during uh, the summer, and then as the season starts, well, I don't think you even stop for the summer. No, we don't. Just running, running, running. Aye, you know what? You'll need that, man, with performances. Aye, you're going to need to keep your stamina up, and I know they're tough on you. Uh, who are we going to shout out to, though, who's been supporting you? Uh, my mum and dad have been supporting me all the way through it. Listen, I'll let you go celebrate. Thank you. One for the GBA team. Well done, my man. It was Devin Joyce. We'll pass back in the ring. So we've got Thomas Flanagan and Ben Gallicott. Thomas Flanagan in the blue corner for Glasgow Boxing Academy. Ben Gallagher from Greenock in the red. Red number one. So we've had 1-1 one, one for Glasgow Watch Academy this side of the show. Thomas wanting to get that pressure up, hear that crowd roar, every shot that he lands. And ben Gallagher wanting to retaliate, he's got a nice guard there on his right hand, looking to try and get that left jab in. Double jab there, so he goes in and then just takes a wee half step back. He so anticipates where his opponent is throwing. And then looking for that opening for a few double jabs himself.
Miller Tears takes her own number one. Thanks nice opening first round there uh, for Thomas Flanagan in the blue corner and Ben Gallagher from Greenock in the red. Glad you're watching JTV Live's coverage of the Glasgow Boxing Academy home show here at the Glasgow Boxing Academy gym. Uh, for what's been a, a great afternoon of Sunday boxing. Round number two. Nice work continuing from Thomas Flanagan. I can see what Ben's trying to do. He's got a nice guard up. I think some of these shots getting caught just there. Got to fire back himself. Nice combination there from Thomas. Nice match up this, we've been a few uh, good match ups. I know the GBA team don't look for the easy option. They want to test their boxers. They always do well to keep the distance as well, seeing to be a few steps back. He's leading in. He's trying to force his opponent in the back foot. And then luring him back in. Went fighting back, it's like a wee turn and swing. But uh, Ben looking for those big shots. He swap girl from Ben, he's starting to find his rival moving from body to head. Thomas keeping that pressure up as we get the final 10 seconds of round number two. So another entertaining uh, round there. I think uh, both boxers are doing well in their, their own way. Um, can Thomas keep the stamina up? He's going to round number three. We get the second one of the second half. So guys, JTV Live's Scottish Boxer of the Year Awards will be Friday the 20th of September at the Glasgow uh, so the Radisson Blue Hotel. Uh, we are looking for sponsors to support the awards. Uh, so JTV Live sponsor starts at £500, you get four VIP tickets. And then we build it up from, from there, you get table sponsor 1,000, you get 10 VIP tickets, award sponsors 1,500, and you get oh, tickets plus drinks package, or event sponsors two and a half, you get 20 tickets. Uh, we're looking to be bigger and better this year. Just because of the, the news uh, recently with Willie Lemmings, we've just held off uh, posting a lot this week just in re respect um, to Willie uh, and his, his family. Um, JTV Live has had a lot of support from the, the Lemmings family over the, the past few years. So we're in now our fifth this week, our fifth birthday. Again, we held off posting so much about that as well. And our thoughts are with uh, Willie Lemond and his family. 
As I know a lot of boxing fans are waiting news, but they need time and space. It's not always an easy game, this, as it's highs and lows. So Anthony Clark's asking who's already boxed. Um, mate, you need to rewind it back. I've already did it through every, every name. I'll try and give you some. Uh, Dylan, very, in fact, we're all the way up to Thomas Flanagan in the second half. We're still waiting for Izzy, Erin Olua, Paul Clark, St. George Towers, uh, Jake Love, Kobe Connolly, Joe McClure, Tyler Khan, and Sean Mohan. Ferro 10 seconds around number three. Both these guys have really done well to keep that energy right up to that final bell. Pass back to Gregory Houston in the ring with the official announcement. Don't go anywhere, guys. You're watching GT Vibes coverage of the Glasgow Boxing Academy home show here at the Glasgow Boxing Academy gym. Our next sponsor there, Diamond Tents. So we can have someone from Diamond Tents in the right place. Well, ladies and gentlemen, please let's hear it for both boxers. <laughs> After three rounds, the winner by unanimous decision in the blue corner. And well the boxers will make their way to the ring, this interview is sponsored by Southpaw Boxing Socks, Thomas Flanagan. Um, i seen how much it meant to you there. There was a bit of hesitant, did you, did, what were you thinking, what did you know, or they've just called me, or were you, what was? I knew I would want it, but so many robberies in it like, happened, so you never know, it was a close fight, the boy was good, so. I think you definitely kept that pressure up for the get-go. Um, he was looking for opportunities, I could see what he was trying to do, but I think you, were, you, you just kept that pressure up. Um, you did get unanimous decision, everybody at ringside um, agreed. Um, what's the plan now, what are we going to see next? Whenever Barry and Gary put me out, like... I've been, you at the morning, man, I know what they're like. I've been, I've been like, just desperate to get a win, because last fight, no, I won my semi and then I lost my final. And then, now I've got my back to winning ways, so just see what's next. You're right, my man, you're right. There's a lot of highs and lows in boxing. Uh, but you get this crowd behind you. Um, who, who's been supporting you? Who are we going to shout out to? Everybody, my dad, my mum, uh, my uncle who sponsored my bout, Diamond Tints, 
Every, just everybody here, basically. Shout out. Oh, my man, listen, well done. Go celebrate, and I'll catch up with you shortly. Introducing his first boxing edge of the red corner. In the red shorts with black from Craig Miller, boxing club in Edinburgh. Paul Watson. <laughs> and in the blue corner with white shorts with black from Glasgow Boxing Academy. He has won gold at Scottish Novice Intermediate and Golden Gloves Championships, Israel. So is he Aaron Oluwa, King of Glasgow? He's boxing Paul Clarkson from Craig Miller. Nice body shots getting in there early. And Paul is a very, very smart uh, boxer. He'll keep those straight jabs. He also has great stamina. I'd imagine that both of these guys will keep an energy and pace right to the end. Oh, big shot there landing. When they get a count. John Smith restarts this bout. And I've seen Izzy box a lot. It's probably first time I've seen him go down to the body very early. And it's, uh, it seems to be doing them, doing them well. Those big body shots, they, they will hurt. We don't always see them a lot in, in amateur, but these big guys, if you can get down there early, just break your opponent and just take the wind out of them. Nice movement there from Izzy. Izzy has a very um, good relationship with his, his coaches, Barry and Gary. It's the first time I mentioned them actually the whole day. Shout to Barry and Gary. Um, you'll see him glance through and just take instruction from his, his coaches and just have a wee glance. International star referee Jim Smith in the ring. Shout out to John McKenna, who I believe is travelling to Colorado. Final 10 seconds, round number one. These guys just get tangled up as the bell is just about to go. Nice work there. Great start to Izzy, getting the count in his favour. Guys, you're watching GTV Live's coverage of the Glasgow Boxing Academy home show here at the Glasgow Boxing Academy gym in Govan. With me, Jamie Alexander O'Neill. We have three bouts left. George Towers and Jake Love up next. Kobe Conley and Joe McClure and Tala Khan and Sean Main Event Mohan. Shout out to all the Glasgow Boxing Academy sponsors. You shall see them up on your screen now. And shout out to all the GTV Live sponsors. We will be at Niff Valley Boxing Club home show next week. They've just came on board as a GTV Live club sponsor. They're joining Solway, Spartans, and Lanark Boxing Club, Southside Boxing Academy, Community Hub, Doghouse, Gabus Nevin Miners, and tonight Boxing Club, Beef Boxing, Jonesies, Brighton Rothfuss, and Sparta Boxing Academy. Here you go, second round, Izzy. Edwin Olua, the King of Glasgow against Paul Clarkson from Craig Miller. Now big power punches as he's still swapping from the body to the head. I think Paul knows he needs to step up this round and take this round. I see Paul is a very smart boxer. Keep to the, the high jab straight to the head. Those big shots land. But as he look, you see him switching down to the body. I said, oh, big, big. Shots land, we're going to get another count. Yeah, as he was good, we mentioned that he's a champion um, at each level in the, the national developments. Yeah. Referee has called it. Great work there for Izzy, Aaron Olua. 
Ball did not get his gloves up. He big shots. He's going to pass back in the ring. It's probably the, the best I've seen um, as he box. Um, different different style moving to the body. Great work. We'll chat to him in a second. We'll pass back in the ring. And while they are headed to the ring, um, is he, is he, is he? King of Glasgow, still the king, uh, reigning, defending. Uh, listen, I've seen you box a lot. We, uh, Greg mentions all, all your accolades, everything you've won before. But bro, that was a different is he I've seen in there, man. The early um, work in the body, the head, bro, it was just brilliant. And I, and I can't see it coming, sitting uh, around stoppage. How are you feeling, my man? I'm feeling great. Just want to thank God again for the victory. Thank my coaches for training me. I thank everyone who supports me. Bro, um, I said that was a total jump. You've always been good. You've always had something, but what have you been working on? It was a conscious decision to start moving to the body? Because I know, I know Paul, I know he'll just throw these straight jabs to the head. Big, big power shots, but straight away you're forcing him. You have to draw his, draw his guard down. And we've seen it there, you've got two counts in your favour. The referee called it. Um, after my semi final, I realised this is. This boxing sport's brutal. I can't wait. I want to try to put my force in more. I want to dominate more. That's what I felt like. All right, my man. Um, and who are we going to shout it to? Who's been supporting you? Shout out to Gary Porter. You already know. Barry Murphy. And everyone supports me. Oh, man, listen, I'll let you go celebrate with this lot. But Izzy, as always, man, brilliant. Izzy, Edwin Oluwa, King of Glasgow. We'll pass back to the ring. Here's a championship for English. To go George Towers and Jake Love. Shout out to everybody tuning in from Northwest. Three two minute rounds. Uh, I've got here 69 kg. Two more boots left after this. Could be Connolly, Joe McCaw from Duries, Talakan, and Sean Menavet Muhan. Big shots are landing from the blue corner. Jake Love moving to the body, keeping a nice stance there. Jaws pushing forward with big head shots. But Jake, keeping nice loose fluid in the ring. Just breezing around that ring when he needs to. Getting into the body again, we've seen just similar to um, Izzy. 
Switch to the body, force your opponent to just draw that guard a bit lower, and then you can go for the, the big head shots. Oh, big, big, big shots there. He's seen that uh, comment. Similar to Izzy, um, Jake was just drawing the... Drawing the, the guard down, got to the body shots and looking for big power punches. Final 10 seconds around number one. Shout out to Morgan Clark who's watching online. Don't forget to hit that wee thumbs up button. So guys, uh, two bouts left. You're watching JT Vibes coverage of the Glasgow Boxing Academy home show with me, Jamie Alexander O'Neill. We're here at the Glasgow Boxing Academy gym. They train upstairs. But look at this, this hall. Uh, they used to have the, I think it was the Big Eat or the Big Feed. Um, and here, don't know if that still goes on. There's buses and stuff next to us. Um, my dad's a bus driver. He's, I don't know if he's working today, but I might get him to, to pull up. Drive me home. So guys, we did take a break um, on social media just this week um, after hearing the news. Uh, uh, Wally Lim and thoughts uh, go out to, to his family um, and everybody, all his supporters. Um, I said there's highs and lows in boxing and there's, there's stuff that goes on you, you don't you don't want to see. Um, but the love's there. And we hope that, that Wally pulls through. We will post um, the highlights from, from each of the shows that we've covered, but we'll, we'll, we'll go try and keep it minimal just in respect. So back in the ring, round number two, George Towers and Jake Love. We see George going for the bigger head shots now. But Jake still just throwing that, that southpaw jab down to the body when he can. International star referee Jim Smith separating both boxers. George just trying to throw these big pearl shots. He needs to watch his guard though. As we've seen in round number one, Jake will take that opportunity if he needs to, if he sees it. Fellow 10 sets around number two. Okay, well, yeah, we'll be back after this short message. Guys, JT Vibes, Scottish Boxing Year Awards Friday, the 25th of September, Radisson Blue Hotel. As I said, we've taken some time off promoting uh, our JT Vibes content this week. But we will be launching the nominations tomorrow on our website. Website is down until we can sort that in. Uh, we had a busy weekend, we were um, live streaming a pay per view last night. So two bouts coming up, Colby Connolly and Joe McClure from Dury's, Tyler Khan and Sean Mohan.
Jaws keeping that pressure on his opponent. Big, big power shots coming there from George. He still aims for the head. See Jake still moving to the body. And then following up to the head. Yeah, this is round three. But you can rewind it back, Aaron, if you like to watch for the beginning. Federal 10 seconds around number three. Has George done enough to pull back the one? Big shot there landing uh, from Jake just on the belt. So we'll find the winner in a second. So guys, just before we get to the next bout, this interview is sponsored by Southpaw Boxing Socks. Uh, Jake Love, last minute addition. Um, I think your name wasn't on the card. Aaron Sawa, he's been watching, waiting. Um, he's getting a bit nervous, thinking you only got to got to be boxing, Matty. I found out you were boxing and told him the card was a mistake. Um, listen, brilliant performance in there. Um, similar to Izzy, the, the, the bout before, I don't know if you've seen that. Moving to the body and the head is, is brilliant when you see it and you see it working. Um, and I think that, that really set your standard, your pace, you get the count in your favour as well round number one. Uh, but trying some art, man, how are you feeling? Good day. Went out, went to my first round there. Uh, set, my, set my standard, set the pace, get control. Two and three, just try to get comfortable, get in the rhythm. Not quite as flown as I would like to be, but a couple of weeks to my home show, I think I'll be, I think I'll be there. Um, the, a tough opponent, I mean, he was, he was trying to stick to the headshots, but as I said, when you, you move to the body, you're forcing him to lower his guard, you throw the, the big headshots, and I mean, yeah, you, you like. I, I, I don't want to get caught in a uh, firing contest when he's keen to load up. Uh, I'd, I'd, I'd rather box him there. Uh, but uh, you know, again, if, it, if it comes to him, I'm happy, happy to trade with him. Um, who are we going to shout with to who's been supporting you? Uh, just update the club, update the club. Coaches, good work there. Organised it last minute for us, uh, and I've got two coaches in my corner here, giving up a Sunday, so just, just a couple. And Aaron Sawa, we'll give him a shout out since he was watching online. Aye, uh, wonder boy, he doesn't need a shout out. That's it, my man, let you go celebrate. Good luck on your home show as well, take care, my man. From Glasgow, Boxing Academy, Western Gold Medalist, Cody! So 
Kobe Connolly and Joe McClure Dooreys versus Glasgow Boxing Academy. Early start here. They're both boxers. Nice work there from Kobe. Uh, we've got Joe, Joe McCaw, Southpaw boxer. We were at the Duties Boxing Cup home show last week. You can watch all that back in JTV's YouTube channel. These two trading blows. Go to finding some success here. Nice head movement from Joe though. Seconds, round number one. Great start there to this bout. Uh, Colby Connolly really finding his driven from the get go. Uh, but Joe McClure, great head movement, trying to duck what's coming, trying to. Uh, oh, somebody's. I thought it was somebody's phone going off. It's. Um, Music played by, by Gregory Houston, a ring announcer. So, guys, uh, one more bit after this Tuller Khan and Sean Mohan, the main events today. His younger brother, Liam, you're supporting them. Uh, shout out to all our GTV Live sponsors. We're looking for more sponsors. A lot of the sponsors that up until now uh, were sponsored came on last year and they will start to, to lapse. And we're looking for, for new sponsors to come and support our GTV Live Scottish Boxing Year Awards. That will be Friday the 20th of September. We'll talk more about that next week. Here we go in the ring for round number two. Kobe Conley in the blue corner and John McClough from Dooney's in the red. Archie Dury and Jimmy Dury in the corner there. Dury's boxing club. Will be keeping busy. Just pulling back when he needs to. Swapped for Joe McClure, but Kobe fighting back. 
She will find a lot of success at this point in the matchup. Final 10 seconds around number two. Nice head movement there from Joe. Cody, Kobe not stopping, moving from body and landing that right. Just on the chin. So guys, you're watching JT Vibes coverage of the Glasgow Box Academy home show. This is our third home show, I'm sure. And it's the first ever home show where me and John O, you'll see on uh, that side, um, have both made. Because the uh, first one, he didn't make. Second one, I didn't make. Third one, we're both here. He's got a front row seat, but I had to just sit one in front of him. We go third and final round. If you're just joining us, guys, hit that like and subscribe button. Kobe Conley in the blue corner and Joe McClure in the red. Well, boxers been keeping busy, slightly different stances. They're different styles, they're, they're definitely different stances. Um, Joe, Southpaw, Kobe, Orthodox. See these words that I've been learning? You would never know that I don't have a clue what I'm talking about. Kobe trying to keep busy, but Joe finding a lot of success in this round. Nice movement around the ring as well. Kobe trying to keep that pressure up, trying to still find the points. But Joe. Just get caught there. So not long left this match up. Go be calling the kitty hang on. Pick up the run over Joe McClure, Stuart Cromo. Wow, great work there as both these boxers all get out in the ring. Uh, we'll pass to Greg Houston with the official announcement. Guys, you're watching JT Wives coverage of the Glasgow Boxing Academy home show with me, Jim Alexander O'Neill. One more bout left, Tyler Khan and Sean Mohan up next. Don't go anywhere. Glasgow Caps. Glasgow Caps in the ring, please.
Okay, ladies and gentlemen, before we get to our final round, we just got a quick presentation we're going to do. And while they're doing that, uh, this interview is sponsored by Southpaw Boxing Socks, uh, Kobe Conley. What a, what a matchup, bro. Um, from start to finish, you just kept that pressure up. Um, against this game, a tough opponent, man. He was trying to get into his own rhythm. Southpaw Boxer can be difficult, but listen, you, you done, bro. You got a unanimous decision. Um, how are you feeling, bro? Oh, I feel brilliant. Uh, aye, it's, it's different. Usually I'm fighting boys smaller than me. I like to use my range, but he's a boy, same height. Same tactics, it was obviously different, but I oh, it was brilliant. Uh, we'll just listen in, the new me will sit here, we'll listen in, they're going to... Um, so, Kobe, uh, well done, I'll get you back in a minute, there you go, there you go. Uh, well done, to Kobe Conley, with the belt, what, Memorial Trophy, we'll pass in the ring. Interview still sponsored by Super Boxing Socks. Kobe Conley, the Bit Walk Memorial Trophy, Boxer of the Year at Glasgow Boxing Academy. I know how much this trophy means to your coaches and the team, uh, but how much does it mean to you, man? Oh, it means so much. It's an honour. This club have taught me everything I know. Gavin Bavi since the old days, you've been doing it. Uh, oh, just to be able to represent them and for them to say I'm the best is. Um, emotional. <laughs> brilliant, man, brilliant. Um, there's a big team uh, waiting to go out and celebrate, uh, but who, who, name some of them, who's been supporting you? Ah, uh, well, my mum, my dad. I mean, I behave like 30-odd folk, but I, and my coaches, as I say, I couldn't have done anything without them. Everything I know, every, everything I know about boxing, they taught me, they know so much, and they're the best coaches. And bro, you've been, I, I was just saying to some of the, the guys there, you're still growing as a, a human, but also as a, a boxer. And it's you, sometimes you need to change your style and adapt as you're growing up. Because, I mean, the height of you in there. Um, I remember when you were just a, a wee boy. Um, and listen, you're developing brilliantly. You're starting to become a boxer that other boxers are sort of looking up to and being like, oh, I want to be like him. And bro, it, it's brilliant to watch. The whole part of my, my channel is to, to follow that journey, man. And what a journey you've had so far. Um, you've got a long, long way to go. Um, but. Where are we going to see you next? What is the plan for the next year or so? I really don't know. It's closing the end of the season, but I'm still open for everything and everything. Take every fight one step at a time. Make a name for myself and hopefully achieve something. You're right, my man. Listen, Kobe Conley, nice Boxing of the Year and winning your bout. Well done, my man. I'll catch you shortly. Yeah, we'll pass back the rings. We go into the main event, Till I Can and Sean Mohan. This will be up. I'm just trying to stay alive and take care of my people.
guys, this is the main event of Glasgow Box Academy Home Show. Live on GTV Live, if you're watching back. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. Tyler Khan, the blue corner. And Sean, main event moving. We are composed start already. John Frono's straight jumps. Ed Zuller opting to try and lower to get the body shot in, and he can't. Sean just landed in the gloves. Talak had another boxer here at Glasgow Boxing Academy which really um, developed over the years and focused uh, on his boxing and done well in his boxing he is Western District Champion and earned his spot to, to main event his home show Boss is getting up close and personal now. Guys, two more rounds left. The guys go watch the Academy Home Show. Um, well done to every boxer that's getting the ring. All the support that they've had from the, the Glasgow Boxing Academy fan base and team. We've got round number two, uh, Talakan in the blue corner from Glasgow Boxing Academy. And Sean Mohan in the red corner. Nice spot from Sean, keeping those high jabs. Tullock using the ring space. Just keeping the distance as he tries to get with that jab. You can see him loading that right hand.
Both these guys really testing each other. Tyler just throwing those jabs and inside, getting down to the body. John trying to get some shots on the outside, get the uppercut in when they get up close and personal with that. Nice left right there landing from the Western District champ. Shout out to the Barhead boxers that picked up the wins last night. Look, McFadgen. He is now the light middleweight Golden Gloves elite champion. Dave Fintar is, I think that's two time, maybe more, super heavyweight champion. And shout out to all the other uh, winners. I won't go through the last. Uh, we can find out Boxing Scotland's YouTube uh, Facebook page. So, guys, we are now ready for the final round of the final bout of the Glasgow Boxing Academy home show. Thank you so much um, for, for tuning in and watching. We'll grab the winner um, after this round. And once again, if you are interested in supporting the Scottish Boxing Year Awards or JTV Live, then drop us a message. Um, we've got a whole lot of sponsorship packages. Our website is offline today and tomorrow uh, as we update it ready for the nominations. Um, but get ready uh, for tomorrow. We will launch the nominations where you can nominate your favourite boxer of the year and volunteer of the year, coach of the year, club of the year, event of the year. You might nominate this event. It's up to you. We'll pass back in the ring.
two still testing each other, keeping busy as their stamina is doing well. It's third round. Nice we back and forward on the two. I think this could be close. We'll find it soon. And that's a bit well done there to both boxers Tilakan and Sean Muhin will pass the Gregory Houston in the ring for the final time this afternoon. Are there clear water? Should we please have someone from clear water to the right? So this interview is sponsored by Southpaw Boxing Socks for the final time tonight. We speak uh, this afternoon. We speak to the winner, um, main event in your home show, uh, Western District Champion. It's quite a, a good year. Um, how are you feeling? Good man. Feel good. It was a good fight. Yeah, good boy as well. Strong boy. Yeah, man, he was. Um, and I mean, it does come to a split decision. It was. I did say it was. I thought it would be close. So you just kept each other going. Your stamina last season. I mean, you look like you could go another. Three, four rounds. I'm surprised, even though it's Ramadan, I've been fasting the whole month, but still, man, I've been putting the work in, so Gary Barry keep me fit. Um, so, Eid was last week. Do you ever, did you manage to celebrate, or is the celebration going to happen now? How did it? I did manage to celebrate, but I, I was just sitting there, no food, you know what I mean? You know how it goes, man, I couldn't really eat much, but it was good, man, it's worth it in the end, you know? Yeah, but yeah, it was good. Um, and who, who's been supporting you? There's a whole crew here, but name some of them. Some of my pals, Faris, obviously, you know Faris. We've got my mate Adam and my cousins and stuff, so it's, been, it's, it's good, man. Oh, man, I was saying there, you're a boxer that, the same as Kobe, that's been the Glasgow Boxing Academy for years, seeing you grow and develop, you're now finding your feet, finding what type of boxer you want to be, man, and you're, you're doing it brilliantly, you constantly challenge yourself, and it's brilliant to watch, man, it's brilliant for me to, to watch that uh, and be part of that journey in, in some aspect, um, but listen, I'll let you go celebrate with this lot, don't celebrate too hard, my man, till I can.